With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and flashed oh, wow. the wonder of life. Looks like on uh, YouTube, we've already got two people. Awesome. And as you um, speak, wish I could see who I was on. I'll wait a little bit. Oh, looks like we got one on uh, Facebook. Good evening, everyone. Good to see everyone. Well, not see, but I guess you guys can see me. Uh, hopefully, everybody's had a good week so far. Uh, it's been one of those days. Seems like we're having more and more of those days. Our rainy days. If creation sings a praise so alive. Guys, let me know uh, if you can. Um, who all's online? Hey, mom. <laughs> Hello there, virtually. Yep. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. Good to see you. Well, good to have you on here. Keep saying good to see you, but good to have you on here. <laughs> kind of waiting around. We just getting started here. I don't know if you can hear the music. I don't want to have the music overbearing. I believe maybe last time I had it a little bit too loud. I'm gonna wait a little bit. See, uh, see if any more come on. Looks like we got two on uh, YouTube, and well, we lost somebody on Facebook. Looks like we. Oh, there comes somebody else. <laughs> ah, three on YouTube. Good evening, everyone. Those of you on uh, YouTube, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I guess that's a, a like, maybe. <clears throat> YouTube is spinning. Um, I wonder if that's, uh, oh, looks like we got uh, about five people on Facebook now. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Hello, hello. Good to have you on here tonight. Trying to, uh, it looks like we got four on YouTube. I don't know why it's spinning, other than maybe there's a lot of people on YouTube tonight. Well, those that uh, can't see it on YouTube, maybe you can come back and watch it. Hopefully it'll kind of calm down. Mom, that's what uh, I think Jeffrey said uh, Sunday, maybe, or maybe in last week, uh, last Wednesday, um, that it was spinning <clears throat> or pixelating, I guess it was. I was moving around too much. We'll wait just a few more minutes. <clears throat> Guys, while we're waiting, um, those of you that are on Facebook, I know if you should be able to see the comments, if you've got any prayer requests, you could always put those in the comments uh, or you can send them to Misty and she will send them out on our uh, prayer chain. Uh, but if you guys will keep uh, Jimmy Welch in your prayers. I talked to him today. Uh, I talked to Jimmy, well, this afternoon, and he had went yesterday, I think it was, to get uh, another round of chemo. And uh, he said he was doing better. He was doing good this go round, better than uh, last week, I guess it was, or last uh, time he got his chemo. Um, so you guys keep him in your prayers, if you will. I'm hoping YouTube kind of calms down. 
Uh, I can't tell on my end. My microphone. I hope everybody can hear me well on that. <laughs> I just went away for a second there. It scared me. <laughs> I was trying to check the microphone uh, to make sure that it is working, but I guess I'll wait, mess with that at another time when I'm not in the middle of something like this. Um, <clears throat> guys on uh, on YouTube, those of you that are on there, if you wouldn't mind, give me a, a like, a thumbs up or what have you. Uh, this kind of gives me a little bit of, um, I don't. I don't want to say a reputation, but a uh, uh, um, makes me a little bit more reputable in, on the YouTube page. And if while you're there, if you like my page, it'll kind of help me also. The more people I get on there, uh, hey Jeffrey, how you doing, buddy? It is working on your side. Good, thank you. Oh, you said Shannon's having her baby. Is it? She's she's got uh, early stages of her labor. Awesome. Awesome. I hope she is doing well. Hope the baby's doing well. Uh, how soon are you talking like, hopefully not right now, uh, but uh, uh, hey, Edith, Gerald, how are you all doing? Hope everybody is doing well this evening. Jeffrey's, uh, he's watching on Facebook and YouTube. He's trying to get all he can. <laughs> uh, oh, she is. She's at home for now. Okay. All right. Well, we'll definitely keep her in your prayers and our prayers. Uh, I'm glad you're glad you're there and not here because we might all get in trouble. Oh, within the next week or so. Okay. Well, good. Good. All righty, I'm going to wait just about two more minutes, maybe. Uh, can you hear the music in the background, or is my mouth a little bit too loud here? Oh, my music just quit on me. <laughs> I guess you can hear it, can you? Well, I'll go ahead and just cut it off. Let me reach up here real quick. There we go. That way... I don't have to worry about it popping up on me while we're talking. Um, we'll wait just a little bit more. Looks like we've got about eight people on Facebook. Uh, we've got um, about four on YouTube. Hey, David, how are you doing? Your mom said she's excited. She's excited to be on board. Now, this ain't quite like, uh, right, Jeffrey, you on both, huh? Uh, this ain't quite like uh, J. Vernon McGee's uh, Bible bus. Uh, if, if it is, it's the short bus, okay? <laughs> uh, I guess I shouldn't have said that. That's rude. Uh, I didn't mean that in a bad way. I just meant that uh, I have nothing like J. Vernon McGee. Uh, he's... Long gone in heaven and fulfilled and in fulfillment of his salvation. Uh, but he probably forgot more uh, information about the Bible than I'll probably ever know. Uh, real good teacher. I really enjoy listening to him. Sometimes I get, I think he gets a little off or a little bit different from what I've been taught or understand. But for the most part, everything he has is, or he teaches is, is really good. All right, guys. Uh, it's almost 10 after. Uh, so if you will, go ahead and find your places in uh, uh, Esther, Esther chapter one. Uh, looks like we got a couple people coming and going here. Um, but uh, what's up, David? Hope I, everybody is well with you. Hope everybody, I hope everybody watching is, uh, is healthy. Uh, not to, not having to deal with this um, this virus mess that's going around. Not having to deal with all the uh, this junk and uh, yeah, I know it's affecting everybody one way or another. 
but uh, I hope everybody is well. Uh, a lot of different things going on with us. We're not sure exactly what all uh, we're going to be dealing with with work. So if you guys will just keep us in your prayers and uh, God's in control and that's all that matters. And I really ain't worried about it. Uh, you do worry a little bit, but I know he's going to take care of everything. So it doesn't matter. So, all right, it's uh, it's 10 after, 10 after 7. So let's go ahead and uh, let's, uh, uh, if you're in Esther, I hope everybody is. I hope you found uh, your place in Esther. Uh, just a little bit of a recap. We're talking about King Ahasuerus. Now, if you remember last week, I said that Ahasuerus is, uh, is more of a title than it is his name. His name was Artaxerxes. And uh, you call him Xerxes. J. Vernon McGee likes calling him Xerxes. Um, Tony uh, Evans calls him uh, Ahasuerus. He calls him Artaxerxes. He calls him you know, a little bit of everything. Uh, but I'll probably just call him Artaxerxes and, um, or King. Uh, throughout, the, throughout the book, it goes back and forth from Ahasuerus to Artaxerxes. And I think a lot of it has to do with who was in the picture at the time. And as we go through this, if we can kind of picture in our minds, it's a play being played out in front of us, a storyline here. Uh, and if you remember, Je uh, e e Esther, uh, Genesis, Esther, Esther is, um, uh, is, is a great biblical Bible, a uh, biblical book. All right, my mind and my tongue and my mouth will get together here in a minute. Is a great biblical book that does not have the name of God in it whatsoever. Does it talk about them? Uh, anybody uh, even really talking about God or, or that God said anything to anyone, but throughout the whole book, uh, all you can see is God working, God uh, uh, dealing with not only his own people, but uh, Artaxerxes with Esther, taking care of her, protecting her, moving her through, uh, uh, to, to the point to where she becomes queen, uh, not to, uh, hey, Brother Dickie, how are you doing, my friend? I hope you are doing well. Um, but uh, uh, Esther, uh, all the way to the point, God uh, uh, takes care of Esther all the way to, to the point of getting married to the king, uh, going from just a, a, a maid, uh, uh, a cousin or stepdaughter to Mordecai, uh, to becoming the queen uh, of of uh, Artaxerxes and, and pretty much the queen over the whole world uh, in that area, uh, 127 provinces. Uh, if you want to look at it this way, maybe 127 states, uh, uh, like the United States, 127 states. Uh, he had a huge amount uh, of area that uh, King Artaxerxes was uh, was over and was in control of. Uh, but if you remember uh, Esther's name. Hadassah means myrtle. Uh, that is her uh, Hebrew name, but her Persian name is Esther, uh, which means star or stara. Uh, uh, it could have been said estara, uh, estera, um, if, as far as the Greek. Um, and, and the Latin title is Hester. Uh, but it, 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 it truly means a blessed one because she was truly blessed. She was truly uh, protected by God through all of this. Um, now, uh, we uh, real quick, King uh, uh, Artaxerxes throws a big party because he wants to uh, go go to war against Greece. He thinks he's going to literally capture the whole globe. Uh, so he's throwing a big party for all the the uh, leaders of the the, the 127 um, provinces. And he's he's wanting to kind of wine and then down them. Uh, he wants them to know that he has the money to back this war. Uh, you know, there are times that, that we've been to war and we always wonder how much is this going to cost us? Is this war worth it? Well, to King Artaxerxes, uh, he thought it was worth it uh, because he spent millions of dollars just in this party, uh, just on this party itself. Uh, it went, went well from the time he had them all start coming in till the last week where he just really poured it on. Uh, it was over uh, just millions of dollars that he spent just 
for a party, just for a banquet, just for a good time to wine and dine um, these these leaders, these governors, if you will, of uh, of these 127 provinces. And one of the things was the last week. Uh, hey, Becky, good to see you this or, or see you on here this evening. Good to have you this evening. I hope everybody is well with you. Um, uh, I, I wish I could see who all was on uh, YouTube with me. I know if you're watching, sometimes you can see, I think it's across the bottom who is, but it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, if you guys will on YouTube, if you'll give me a like or a thumbs or whatever it is, it kind of helps me out with the, the uh, YouTube page that I have. Uh, but um, anyway, talking about Queen Esther, uh, everybody, we are in uh, Esther chapter one still. Uh, but the king uh, he's throwing a banquet this last week, and he's really pouring it on. But according to the uh, to the laws of the Medes and Persians, uh, you don't have to uh, uh, overindulge in anything unless you want to. And if you want to, you can. You can have as much as you want. So you can eat all you want. You can drink all you want, whatever. And uh, the verse 8, if you guys will, go to chapter 1, verse 8. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compel, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. All right. And also, while the men were having this great banquet with the, the king, Queen Vashti, the, the first wife or the original wife in this story that we know of, uh, Queen Vashti is throwing a party for the women. And, you know, they, they were quite civilized. They were keeping the men and the women separate. Uh, I, I, I would assume that uh, uh, King sure that there, there weren't any problems. And a lot of times when you mix pagans together, uh, there can be problems. There can be, uh, well, you all know what I'm saying here. Uh, one man may look at a, another man's wife wrong and start an argument or, or maybe another man hits on another, whatever the case is, it could really cause problems doing that, especially when people uh, start getting uh, inebriated. Hey, Christina, how are you this evening? Uh, good to see you or good to have you on here. I keep saying good to see you. I can see you, but uh, well, I guess you can see me too. So anyway, I hope everybody is doing well in your uh, family, in your household. Um, but uh, we are in Esther, Esther chapter one. Uh, we got, uh, if you go through the Bible, you've got uh, uh, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. It's second, first, second chron Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Then you go to Job. If you find Job, you've gone too far. Find Job, turn back to the left a little bit. That kind of helps me out, know about where I'm at. Um, anyway, um, so uh, we're talking about the King Artaxerxes and, and, the, and the great uh, banquet that he gave. Uh, and uh, right there in verse 10, uh, on the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded uh, Mehuman, Bistha, Orbona, Bigtha, Ag Ab Abagtha, uh, Zethar and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king. Now, let me tell you something. Um, as I was reading these words and my tongue was tripping over my teeth, I realized I have not given the Lord uh, his duty right here. I have not uh, uh, prayed. So if you guys will just bow with me and I'll go ahead and pray. And uh, hopefully the Lord will straighten my, my tongue and mouth out here. So let's go ahead and bow for a word of prayer. Okay. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, please forgive me uh, as I uh, completely forgot, just got jumped right into this book of Esther. I completely forgot to give you the glory and the praise for the day. Uh, Father, uh, I do ask for your forgiveness for starting this, uh, this service this evening without uh, coming to you and, and, and praising you and glorifying you because you, you deserve it. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the praise. Uh, Father, because you are holy, you are awesome, you are wonderful, uh, you are God. Uh, Father, I thank you because I know that you understand I'm forgetful and I, I do make mistakes. But Father, I do ask that you will just uh, uh, bless the rest of the evening, uh, bless the rest of the uh, service as we study your word. Lord, help us to uh, dig in and find these little nuggets that you've left for us to, to kind of roll over and, and, and find the little jewels there. Uh, so that we can learn, so that we can grow uh, in, in the knowledge of your word. Father, I do ask that you'll fill us with your spirit. 
And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. All right. As uh, uh, King uh, Artaxerxes, uh, as, as he was parting along, now he didn't get drunk quickly, but sometime or another he started getting tipsy. And he started, you know, showing off his palace and showing off the garden uh, that they were partying in. And he was like, look, you think this is all beautiful and you think this is all awesome? You ought to see my wife. The queen is the most beautiful queen in, in all the world. <laughs> Quit touching my face. Uh, Wesley, sorry, but that was for you. But <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, good to see, uh, good to have you on here, Wesley, uh, Melissa, Missy Alls. Uh, we truly miss you guys so much. Um, but uh, Artaxerxes, he was getting really inebriated. He done, he done hit the wine a little bit too much, and he decided that uh, he was going to show off his wife. Now, there are different theologians think different uh, differently about this. They think that Artaxerxes sent off uh, for his wife to come out with her crown on, jeweled crown, uh, in two different ways. Some believe that she was just commanded to come and show off the crown and her beauty. And some believe that she was commanded to come completely naked wearing only the crown. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, as much as I love my wife, I would never ask that. Uh, for one, because I respect her too much. And also, I respect myself too much. Uh, she is a beautiful woman, uh, but I am not going to ask her to come and show off for a bunch of men uh, because all I'm doing is asking for trouble uh, with those men and with my wife as, as well. Uh, so it's something that uh, a wife is a treasure. She is a jewel, but she is mine. She is my jewel. So uh, King Artaxerxes really overstepped his bounds here. Didn't matter whether he, uh, he commanded uh, with or without the clothing. He overstepped his bounds. And Queen Vashti said no. And this is about where we're at here. She said no. She is not coming. And he waited around and he uh, he had some men there that said, hey, King, if you're going to if you're going to allow your wife to tell us to tell, you no, know, she being the queen, how much more is our wives or are our wives going to tell us? No, we can't have that. All right. So uh, verse 13, and we'll kind of read on through until we get to a point we haven't gotten to before yet. OK, verse 13. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times for so was the king's manner toward all that new law and judgment. And the next unto him was Karshina, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Mires, Marsena, and Memucan, uh, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face and which sat the first in the kingdom. Uh, they were um, they were like his cabinet. They were his uh, his wise men, if you will. Uh, he would go to them and consult with them on what to do on a daily, hourly basis. Uh, to, to make laws or, or, or whatever, to, you know, throughout the day for the kingdom. Um, verse 15, what should we do unto the queen Vashti according to law? Because she hath not performed the commandment of the king uh, Ahasuerus by the chamberlains. And Mamukin answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and all the people that are in all the provinces of the, of the king Ahasuerus. Uh, this guy right here is really worried because undoubtedly this man is having some problems at home anyway. Uh, so he's trying to figure out how he can fix this to the point to where his wife has to obey him uh, instead of just uh, him asking her to do something. And she says, yes or no. Verse 17, for the deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all the women so that, that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes when it shall be reported. The king of Ahasuerus commanded Vashti, the queen, to be brought in before him, but she came not. And he's saying, look, all the women, all of our wives are, going, wives are going to tell us no. And they're going to say, well, if the queen ain't got to do it, I ain't got to do it. Uh, you can almost just see the sarcasm just uh, rolling out of his mouth as he's saying this. He's like, king, are you going to let this happen? Are you going to allow her to do this? You know, that he, she's not just doing this to you. She's doing it to even us and everybody in the provinces. And the thing is, the king doesn't want to look bad in front of all these men. He's got at least 127 leaders here that he's whining and dining, trying to get them to go to war with him against Greeks. Verse 18, 
Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. This guy's saying, look, it's going to happen. You know it. It's going to cause all kinds of problems, and there ain't nobody going to be happy. Excuse me, guys. Got to wet my whistle a little bit. And, and you all know that if you're having problems at home, it causes problems everywhere you go. If you're having problems between your spouse, with you and your spouse, you're going to have problems all over the place. So uh, this guy's saying, look, King, we got to put an end to this. We got to put an end to it right now, right? Verse 19, right here it is. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment. Now, remember, and the commandments and the laws of the Medes and Persians, once it's set, it cannot be erased. It cannot be changed, okay? All right, listen. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before the king of Ahasuerus and let the king give her royal estate unto another, another that is better than she. He's pretty much saying, look, king, you need to divorce her. You need to get rid of her. And you're going to find somebody even more beautiful, even better, even more royal than this Queen Vashti. Okay. Verse 20. And when the king's decree, which he shall make, shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great. You see how he's bird, uh, uh, buttering him up? He's like, look, king, once it goes throughout all your empire, and you know, this is a great, great, huge, large empire that you're king of, right? Um, oops, lost my place. Uh, there in the middle of verse 20, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. He's wanting to put the, he's kind of wanting to slide in like he's politi politicians do, you know, let's make a bill. Let's write it up. We're going to help the people, but we're going to put a little bit of stuff over here for me, a little bit of stuff over here for me. Uh, he's saying, we're going to make a decree that Queen Vashti can no longer come to the king, uh, that, that the king is going to get rid of Queen Vashti and he's going to find a better woman. But as we're making this law, we're going to make sure that all the women have to obey all the men. Okay. All the wives must obey all the husbands. Verse 21. Now think about this. He's still inebriated. He's still tipsy. Uh, have you ever met someone that has been drinking a whole lot and uh, made good decisions? <laughs> no, me neither. So this king here, he's being buttered up. Uh, he's been uh, embarrassed in front of all these men and he's going to make a decree. Verse 21, and the saying pleased the king and the princes. See, uh, it's being said to the king, but it, it, we're still in this in this banquet here. And all these princes here is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You make a make a decree to where my wife's got to obey me no matter what. Make a decree, yeah. You don't need her. We'll find somebody else better for you. You know, all these men building building up the king. You know, a bunch of idiots, just a bunch of drunk idiots. Okay, uh, verse twenty one. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Mimukin, for he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every uh, province according to the writing thereof. And to every people after their language, that every man uh, should bear rule in his own house and that should be published according to the language of every people. Now, think about it. What have you always heard about uh, in the Old Testament, in the times of the Old Testament, in, in the B.C. era? era uh, women weren't much more than like cattle or, or sheep. Uh, they could be they could be used and thrown away or abused. But undoubtedly here with the Medes and Persians, they had a little bit more respect to an extent uh, for their wives up to this point. And this is where they really messed up uh, because the Bible makes it clear uh, that when a man and a woman come together, they are as one, not three quarters and a quarter, uh, not uh, seven eighths and one eighth. It's one become one. You're equal. You're equal in God's eyes. In God's eyes, when God sees uh, you as a, as a married couple, he sees you as one. Uh, so a, having said that, you both are equal, should be equal as in making decisions, should be equal in, in, in everything in every part of your married life uh, it should be equal. Now, the, the other thing is, men, God holds you, me, us, the husbands responsible 
for what goes on in my household or in your household. So it's your responsibility to make sure that everything goes smooth and well and pleasing to God. So that makes it even harder on us. And how does that happen? By compromising with your wife, wives, compromising with your husbands to have a nice, even keel, good marriage before God's eyes. Okay. Uh, but the king didn't want that. The king didn't like that. And of course, all these men were like hooting and hollering because uh, now they could tell their wives what to do and they had to obey because it was in law now. Okay. All right. Chapter two. We're doing good. Second week, chapter two. Uh, after these things, chapter two, verse one. Okay. After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decreed against her. Got a question for you. Think about this for just a second. Uh, hey, Brother Dwayne, how are you doing? Uh, I hope uh, Melissa is able to watch with you as well. Uh, but I hope you are uh, doing well here. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, Esther chapter, uh, actually chapter two, verse one says, after these things. Now, this is where you have to go to uh, secular history. Uh, we got to, we got to, and that was something that's awesome about the book of Esther is that we have history about Artaxerxes here, about uh, King Ahasuerus. King Ahasuerus uh, uh, wanted to go against Greece. Remember, we talked about that in the first chapter. There's a lot of time that has passed between chapter one and chapter two here, okay? So after these things means when they went out to war against Greece. Now, uh, uh, the K King uh, Artaxerxes uh, takes his, his uh, army. He's got an army and he has a navy, okay? He takes his army and goes uh, towards Greece uh, and they meet up in Thermopolis. And this is where the army, uh, the, his military, uh, goes up against the Greece, the Grecian military. Now, the thing that made uh, the the prince and uh, the Persians and Medes, the Medes and Persians, um, so strong and so good when they went into battle, was because they had numbers. I mean, when they went to battle, it was always ten to one, twenty to one, thirty to one. They had a lot of people going into battle, so they were able to lose. Uh, a, a certain amount of people and still win the battles and still win the wars. But the problem is King Artaxerxes underestimated the Grecian army. Uh, the the uh, Persian army, the Medes and Persians, um, got dogs barking here for some reason. Uh, anyway, the Medes and Persians, uh, they relied upon uh, their numbers. Uh, as far as fighting abilities, they were not that good fighters. The Grecians, though, they spent a lot of time practicing, preparing, teaching their uh, military how to fight. So when the Greeks went against the Medes and Persians, one Greek was worth at least 10 Persians. So uh, uh, the, the Greeks uh, dominated against Artaxerxes here. Now, the thing is, though, Artaxerxes had a large group of people. All right. Uh, uh, just just for numbers sake, let's say the, the Greeks had 100 men and the uh, as far as military men on the ground, Artaxerxes had 300 men on the ground. All right. And uh, but Artaxerxes also had 300 ships with about 100 to 500 men on those ships. And those ships were going to come around and outflank the Greeks. Now, remember what I was saying earlier that in the book of Esther, the name of God, uh, Yahweh or Jehovah is not mentioned, but you can see God working even in the in the secular history. You can see God working in that the uh, the 300 ships come around and Artaxerxes knew that they should be close uh, to coming in and knew that they would outflank the Greeks and that would be enough men on the ground once they landed uh, to be able to overtake Greece. But you know what? God had another plan. The day that they met and got into, to, into the Greek area, into the Greek islands there, there came a great storm and sunk all 300 ships. Don't tell me God didn't have his own providence 
in this. Don't tell me that God didn't have things planned because uh, even with the book of Daniel, which uh, Esther is kind of like in the tail end of uh, what we read in the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, he prophesied that the Medes and Persians would come in, but then the Greeks would come in and overtake and take over from the Medes and Persians. They would they would rule uh, and the Medes and Persians would be no more. So, uh, but God is in control. Doesn't matter what's going on. Doesn't matter what's going on in your life, in my life, uh, over in Israel, over in, in Europe, in, in Russia, where in, in the Southern Hemisphere of Africa or, or Venezuela. It doesn't matter what's going on. God is in control. God is going to have what God wants. And, and what God wants is his will to be done in our lives. And the thing is, which we'll see here in just a little bit, the thing is, Sometimes we may not be in the in God's will, but God's still going to make things happen so that he is glorified. The Bible says that he makes all things work together for the good to them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. May not be exactly the way I wanted, may not be exactly the way I, I thought it was going to happen or work out, but it's going to glorify God if we would just allow him to work in our lives. All right. Now, so. After these things, after these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased or subsided, uh, he was very upset. All of his navy had sunk, all of it sunk at within, I don't know, it was like within a, a few days. It's completely sunk. So, I mean, all of that, uh, that those men that were supposed to come help uh, were gone. So Artaxerxes had to retreat and he, and he was very mad, very upset that that he was not able to conquer Greece like he thought he was going to. So, and, and and right here, this is something that all men, you know, we get mad, we go off, do our own thing, and we, we you know, we'll kick a stump and throw some rocks or whatever. And, you know, we get out there and work on a car, we work in a garden, we work outside, you know, we get away because we're mad. But once we calm down, we realize how much we need our wives. Doesn't matter how many times. Uh, we get an argument or, or, you know, a disagreement or, you know, whatever the case, whatever you want to call it. We need our wives. We uh, wives, you need us, your husbands and we need you wives. Um, the Bible said Jesus or uh, uh, well, Jesus did say, but God said that it was not good for man to be alone. Uh, as right here is a reason because make many uh, dumb mistakes. But it says right there in verse one, he remembered Vashti. And what she had done and what was decreed against her. You know, he stopped and thought, and he's like, you know what? I was an idiot. Why in the world would I have asked her to do something like that? That would have degraded her. And not only her, that would have been degrading to me. Because of all these men, you know, with Google eyes, you know, the boing, boing eyes on my wife. I don't want that. I, I, I'm proud that she's a beautiful woman. But I don't want other men just Google eyed after her. So he realized what an idiot he did and the decree that he made, you know, it'd been okay if he'd said, all right, you know, I'm done with you, go on, get, but he made it law. And by making it law, it can never be changed. Verse two, then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, let there be fair young virgins sought for the king. These guys that knew the king, they knew that, that he needed a woman. He needed a wife. Uh, these were smart guys. They, uh, things were going to get bad around the kingdom if um, if they didn't find him a wife. Now, the thing is, remember, too, he had a harem. But having a harem and having a wife is two different things. Um, I don't know how it is to have a harem, so don't get me wrong here. But there are times you can you can confide in your wife that you can't confide with anybody else. There are times that you just be comforted by your wife. She knows you. Uh, she knows how to comfort you compared to, you know, just a group of people that, yes, yes, yes. Okay, what do you need? What do you need? What do you know? What do you want? What do you want? And excuse me, the wife uh, knows what you need. So uh, there's a difference. They, they said, let's, let's find some, uh, let there be fair young virgins sought for the king. Verse three. And let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom that they may gather together all the fair young virgins 
unto Shushan the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of Hege, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their uh, things for purification be given them. All right. Right here, we're getting started into the um, um, beauty contest, if you will. Let me ask you a question. And I know you can't answer. You could write it on Facebook, I guess. But does God agree with having a beauty contest? Let me give you a second here. I'm going to tell you no. I don't think he does. Uh, so why is it that we're getting to read, uh, getting ready to read about a beauty contest in God's word? Does it mean since it's in God's word, then it's something that should be allowed? No, no, it doesn't. Uh, in God's word, there's two different things, prescriptive and descriptive. Prescriptive is when God is telling you, this is what he wants you to do. This is what he wants you to. Thank you, Jeffrey. Nope. Nope. He, he is he is not agreeing with this. Um, prescriptive means it's prescribing a way to live to please God. Descriptive is the Bible just describing what happened during this time. It's just like when uh, uh, Abraham um, took uh, Sarai's concubine and had uh, a, a son by. Was that something that God was uh, agreeing with, that God was uh, wanting to happen? Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, but it was it was the Bible describing what happened. And by describing it, it kind of helps us understand how people get from point A to point B to point Z and, and all the stuff in between and, and understanding uh, how things could have been better, how things could have been easier if they'd have been more in the will of God instead of trying to help God out. That's what Abraham did. Um, so, okay. So uh, right here, the, the, they're saying gather up all the beautiful women, uh, bring in, br bring them in and let's get all the stuff together for the purification, the, the, for the for the beauty pageant. Uh, we're going to get uh, some beautiful robes. We're going to get uh, we're going to get some makeup. We're going to get some hairdressers in here. We're going we're going to do the do up and and, and we're going we're going to really pretty them up. And then the king's going to choose which one he likes, and and the one he likes is, is going to be the queen. Okay, All right, verse four. And let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti, and the thing pleased the king, and he did so. So he said, OK, let's have a beauty contest there. Why shouldn't I have the most beautiful woman in, in, in the land? Why shouldn't I? You know, Vashti is a beautiful woman, but I can't have Vashti no more. So guess what? We're going to get the next best or the best, maybe even better than Vashti. Vashti OK, verse five. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of J Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. Um, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. Now, those of uh, those of you that are in the adult uh, Sunday school class that our brother Wayne uh, Martin's teaching, you'll you'll recognize these names: King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon, and uh, understand that this right here. Uh, Mordecai was part of those that were captured, maybe possibly a young child or maybe even a baby uh, when when uh, the Jews were captured and taken into captivity. Um, so Mordecai is part of this group. Now, at this point in time, there are a few people that are that are going back to Israel, uh, back to Jerusalem to uh, rebuild and, and to uh, revamp uh, Israel, the, the homeland, but there's a lot of them that decided to stay. There's a lot of them that have made their homes there. Uh, a, a lot of the children that have grown up, they don't know anything else. Uh, so they're, they're, they're just staying right there. Um, they, they have no desire. Yes, you know, it'd be wonderful to go back home, but you know what? I've built up a great thing here and I'm not going to leave it. So, and, and that's kind of what Mordecai, uh, Mordecai, uh, Mordecai is. Uh, he's, uh, he's he's in the uh, uh, he's in the palace. He's working in the palace. He's got a good job, a cush, cushion job. Uh, so he, why give that up to go back and work hard? You know, if you got a if you got a good paying job and you got it easy, uh, why give all that up to go back and knowing that you're going to have to rebuild and redo and 
when you could just stay where you're at. So uh, it was it God's will that he stay. Well, uh, maybe, maybe not. But since he is here, God's going to use. It. Let me tell you something. God will use you anywhere you are if you're just willing. You may have messed up and gotten out of the will of God, but if you will be, just go right back, confess your sins, and, and start serving God again, and, and, and God knows your desire, God, God knows your heart. And if you're just willing for him to use you, he will use you for his will and for his glory, no matter what situation you're in, no matter what position you've done gotten yourself into, uh, you, if you will just allow God uh, to use you, okay? All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, uh, Kish here. You remember who uh, Kish was? Wasn't Kish uh, Saul's, King Saul's dad? Uh, so uh, Mordecai, Mordecai is, is in the family of Saul, King Saul, um, uh, the, the Kish of Benjamite. OK, so he's a Benjamite. Um, uh, let's see. Verse seven. Verse seven. And he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. For she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful. Or uh, my Bible has it translated here, uh, the maid was lovely and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. Now, Mordecai must be an, an older man, probably, let's say, maybe in his mid-20s, 30s, uh, maybe a little bit older. But his uncle had a daughter, which would make them two cousins. His uncle and his aunt died. So Esther had nobody to take care of her. Esther had nobody to protect her. So she must have been a young child when Mordecai got her. And he raised her as his own, as his own stepdaughter. Okay. And the thing is, she's a beautiful young lady. Beautiful. Now, Mordecai hears all this stuff going on in the, in the palace. And he knows that Esther is a beautiful woman. And that she has an opportunity for some great things. Now, and I know I say this now. What I want you, what I want to do is I'm going to stop. Um, think about this. The problem is Mordecai talks Esther into going for this beauty contest. Number one, if she wins, she becomes queen. If she doesn't win, she doesn't get to go home. She becomes part of the king's harem. So Mordecai is kind of really not doing a good thing. Now, later on he is, and it ends up being a good thing, but he didn't know this is how it was going to turn out. So just because it seems like it's a good thing, you know, are you that confident that she's the most beautiful young lady in, in, in all the provinces? I mean, has he traveled around and seen every woman? Has he seen every woman in the, that has been brought to the palace and realizes that that Esther is more beautiful, more lovely? And, and the thing is, you got to be—you all know it as well as I do. Beauty is more than just skin deep. Okay, uh, some some women just have a natural beauty, but they can be ugly as can be inside, and makes them nothing more than a witch. I mean, just ugly. Plain, ugly, rude, mean. But a woman can can be fair, can can have, can be pretty, but she's got a heart of gold, which makes her more beautiful and shine than any woman out there. So, and I believe maybe, maybe this is what Mordecai understood and saw, was that if the king got to know her, she would win hands down. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Verse eight. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard. And when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan, uh, Shushan, the palace to the custody of Hegai, that Esther was brought also under the king's house to the custody, custody of Hegai, keeper of the women. Now, Hegai, uh, excuse me, guys. Hegai had a, uh, uh, a great, <laughs> that's right, Jeffrey, a, a great big heart. She had a great heart. Uh, uh, he guy had a great uh, 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 challenge before him. Uh, he was keeper of the women. Uh, he was the one that had to take care of and make sure the women had everything they needed. Uh, he answered to the king and he went to the king, said, king, I need a gallon of shampoo uh, smelling like lilacs. The king says, done, you know, and he tell, tells uh, Hey guy. 
hey, look, you ain't got to come to me. You get whatever you need for these women. Whatever they need is you get. It's on you. OK, so he goes and he takes care of these women. He makes sure that these women are fed well, that they are rested, that uh, they don't just lay lay around and, and uh, get a little soggy, uh, soggy bottoms, if you will. Um, but these women, uh, uh, you know, everything that they need, that they say they need to for their beauty, for their uh, beauty salon or whatever the case, uh, he gets it and makes sure that they have it. OK, all right. Verse nine. And the maiden pleased him talking about Esther, and she obtained kindness of him. And he speedily gave her things for purification with such things as belonged to her and seven maidens. Now, he gave her everything that she needed quickly. She was the first one to get whatever. She was the first one to get to choose. Uh, uh, Esther, go choose which uh, shampoo you want. Esther, go choose which uh, lipstick you want. Esther, go uh, uh, get these seven ladies right here. These are your own handmaids right here. They are here to serve you and to do whatever you need. You need your uh, uh, toenails painted. They'll do it for you. You need your head massaged. They'll do it for you. These seven women are, are for you. These seven maidens. Uh, it says right here in the middle there, which were meat to be given her out of the king's house. Uh, they were, it was good for them to be given to her or meat that, that they were there for her. Okay. Uh, and he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. Now, <laughs> Esther must have been a beautiful woman. She must have been a kind woman. She must have been a woman that said, hey, how are you doing? And then stopped to listen. Let me tell you something. That goes a long way when you're talking with people, especially as Christians. When, when you ask someone how they're doing, don't just, hey, how you doing? You know, and keep going. So, hey, how are you doing? Hope you're having a good day. Give them a second because, you know, they're waiting. Eh, they're just saying, oh, wait a minute. They're serious. They really are truly serious. And as Christians, we should be. As Christians, we should be that type. And that's what Esther was. Uh, she was the type that uh, she was very friendly, very likable. Everybody probably liked her. And, and, and in the end, even the women that lost were probably glad that Esther won. So, yeah, well, you know, Esther deserved it. Esther deserves to get her own room. Esther deserves the best, you know. Uh, you know, she was just that type of person that, and, and I believe she cared for everyone. It wasn't just, well, I'm the most beautiful. And I, it, it wasn't nothing like that. It was, she was truly pure and beautiful inside and out, okay? And it didn't, it didn't hurt none that she got her own room by herself. She didn't have to share it with all the other women. She, it says that she got the best place of the house of the women. Probably uh, she got the, the window with the sun coming up in the morning, uh, looking out over the, uh, the beautiful gardens and uh, the beautiful flowers. So first thing in the morning, the, you know, the sun wakes her up and she has the smell of the flowers waking her up. She got the best of the place because uh, uh, he guy uh, uh, really liked her. Okay. Verse 10, Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred. For Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. She hadn't told anybody that she was a Jew. She had not said anything uh, to the effect of who her uh, or even what her religion was. Thing is, uh, especially in this day and age, if she had told them that she was a Jew, everybody would have known that she uh, was part of the captive people, uh, that she uh, would worship the one that they call the one true God, which we believe is truly believe. And he is the one true God, uh, Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Uh, but it was it was a religion that uh, most of the people did not agree with. Uh, so she Mordecai says, look, just keep this on the download. Don't tell them. Was that a good thing? As we see later, yes, it was. Um, but I don't think we should ever be ashamed to say that we're a Christian. Now, I will tell you, I don't go around, and I'm not bragging. I'm not saying that. Don't get that wrong. I don't go around telling people that I'm a pastor. Uh, I just, you know, say, you know, they might say, well, you know, where do you go to church? Well, I go to James Creek Gospel Church. Oh, okay. 
You know, some people come back. Well, you never told me you was a pastor. Oh, well, I didn't think it really mattered, did it? And, well, no, not really. You know, so okay, that right there, because I don't, I don't tell people that I'm a pastor because then people are like, oh, oh well, we got to watch what we say. We can't do this. We can't, you know, I want people to be normal. I want people to be, and that's the way we should be. We should want people to be normal around us. Now, it doesn't mean that we want to partake in all the junk and mess that goes on, but at the same time, we want people to to be comfortable around us. Uh, we want people to feel like they can tell us and talk to us about anything without being judged. Uh, because some people, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past, uh, Christians have been very judgmental. Uh, and we, it's up to us to break that habit, to break uh, that, that, that people are not being so judgmental uh, or think of Christians as being judgmental. Uh, so we have to do that. So uh, was it good that she told him? We know later on, yes, it was. But maybe she, at this point in time, it's probably best because they might have treated her different. He guy might have treated her different if he had known she was a Jew. OK, um, let's see. Verse 11. And, and this is about where we're going to finish up. Uh, Queen Esther, verse 10, Esther had not shown her people nor her kindred. For Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. Uncle Mordecai here, though, verse 11. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Just because he sent her in there and said, okay, you need to go in. You need to do everything you can to win this beauty pageant. Didn't mean that Mordecai didn't care for her. He loved her. He loved her as his own daughter. I mean, she was family. She was his cousin. Um, she was his first cousin and, and he took her in to raise her. And that was not something that the Jewish people took lightly uh, to raise a child, to raise another person's child. Uh, when they took them in, it was an oath. Um, they they uh, uh, they would have adopted them in an adoption in the Jewish uh, um, uh, lifestyle is is a major thing. Uh, someone that is adopted cannot be denied any rights to uh, to the uh, uh, to the land or, or the the possessions of the family if they pass away. They cannot be denied by law, by the Jewish law, even in the law of the United States. I, I think I've talked about that. Probably talk about it another time. Uh, but he loved her. So every day he went by. Now, remember, he, he worked there. He was in the he worked in the palace. So every day he went by. Uh, he went by the court, uh, the area um, where uh, Esther was and just wanted to ask. And maybe he asked he guy, hey, that, that beautiful woman over there. How's she doing? You know, how are the women doing? Anybody standing out? Oh, Esther standing out. Oh, OK. You know, he, he wouldn't give her away. He wouldn't have uh, said, you know, that, oh, that's my my daughter, my stepdaughter. And he wouldn't go on. He would have just kind of questioned and said, hey, you know, I, I, I'm just curious of how she's doing. All right, guys, uh, we will get in to uh, verse 12 next week. I will try not to uh, recap. Uh, very much so we can kind of get on into maybe even into chapter three next week. Uh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> all right, guys, let me bow for a word of prayer. And then uh, hopefully, uh, if you all will share these uh, videos uh, and uh, just share it to where everybody, hopefully a lot of people can get it. And um, you never know. I've got some things brewing. I got some things going on uh, that hopefully uh, we, we might be able to see each other face to face here soon, uh, hopefully anyway. Okay. Uh, pray about it. Keep uh, lifted up in God's prayers, uh, uh, in your prayers to God. Sorry. And, uh, and his will be done at this. Okay. All right. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly father. Uh, thank you again for allowing us to open your word. Thank you for allowing us to, uh, uh dig into Esther. Uh, father, help us to be, uh, kind of like we were talking about with queen Esther that to be a loving Christian, to be well, to be Christ-like. Everyone that Christ met, he loved uh, and, and he shared his love. He didn't blow them off. Uh, if anyone come around him, uh, he tried uh, to love on them and many received it and many rejected it. But Father, help us to do everything that we can to show and share the love of Christ. Father, I do ask that you will be with your people. 
Uh, Lord, uh, I know we all miss each other. We miss the fellowship of just getting together uh, and, and that that gathering together, your word says, is good for us. Uh, we're not to forsake the gathering together. And Lord, right now, uh, we have to be obedient to the laws of the land and, and, and not gather together. But Father, hopefully soon, uh, we can at least see each other face to face. Maybe not, uh, maybe not touch, maybe not uh, be able to be side by side in the pews. But uh, Father, but your will be done, Lord. I, I don't want to get too too far going and then things fall apart and, and we'd be uh, upset. But Father, I do ask that you will uh, glorify yourself through us and in us and help us to do everything to glorify the name of Jesus. And in his strong name we pray. Amen. Good night, everybody. I hope you all have a good rest of the week.